Good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank you for joining me this afternoon just for a, just for a real quick daily devotional uh, that we're going to do this afternoon. I want to thank Scott for doing these and keeping us uh, kind of semi-connected with our church family. Thank you for the work he's put in um, to get that published and get it uploaded. As you may know, you've probably heard, it's been a, a struggle uh, trying to get stuff uploaded and streaming service, but uh, we got through it. Uh, thanks to the Lord's Lord's work, but just want to thank you for doing that. Thanks to Alex and Scott both for preparing lessons for Bible class, for worship, and for uh, Wednesday night Bible class. I just want to talk to you today about something that's been on my mind since this whole pandemic started. Um, and you will notice I am wearing glasses now, so uh, that is a sign of getting older. So bear with me as I try to struggle through this. Wearing these for the that is something I have realized during being at home with this last six or seven weeks is I now have to wear glasses most of the time when I read. Uh, so uh, just bear with me and save your jokes till we get back to church. Uh, when this whole entire quarantine period started, uh, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know how long we were going to be locked down, how long we were going to be uh, self quarantined at home, how long the kids and teachers would be out of the classrooms, out of the gyms, off the courts, off the fields. How long we would be doing curbside food pickup, and more importantly, how long we were actually going to have to cook at home or grill at home for our families. How long we would not be able to go to work and have to work from home, and more importantly, how long we would be out of the church building. Right. So it's a new norm for everybody, and we're still getting adjusted to it. I just want to talk to you today about your faith and how your faith has been affected during this whole pandemic. Hopefully, we can take something, a little nugget today, and remind us all that God is still in control. You've got to have faith to remember that when all this is over and we return to some semi-normalcy life, it's going to be different. Uh, the question I want you to answer today is regarding your faith. Has it increased? Has it uh, stayed the same? Or has it weakened during this whole time? This class is a little bit different for me because I'm used to having comments and dialogues from the audience. So please bear with me. Uh, is as we go through this today because it's it's new territory for me the word faith uh, well, you would be surprised how many times it's found in the New Testament It is found 458 times in the Bible according to the NIV it's used in various ways in the New Testament in Matthew 24 45 it means faithfulness in Luke 7 chapter 2 verses 10 it meant absolute trust as some came to Jesus for healing in Hebrews 11 it means a confident hope or a confident expectation. Faith is a gift God gives us because he is saving us. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 reads, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift from God. Read that again. It says it is the gift from God. And I want to ask you this question this afternoon is when you get a gift for your birthday or for Christmas or any other time of the year, do you look at that person and say, thank you for this gift. Now, how much do I owe you? That's not the intent of a gift. A gift is something that someone has given you out of the goodness of their heart and they want you to have it free of charge. And that's what God gave us when he sent his son to the cross. All we had to do was hear the word, believe, repent be baptized and he has given us a gift that we can use to teach others and to go to heaven one day we should respond to god with gratitude praise and joy because of this gift paul wrote about losing everything he had and let's turn over to second timothy chapter one we'll read uh nine or ten verses there second timothy chapter one and we'll start in verse number three the title of this section is called Encouragement to be Faithful. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. 
So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything that we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. The last verse is verse 13. What you heard from me keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Paul was telling Timothy to be strong even in times of despair. Expect hardships, expect suffering, and expect persecution. Even in, even in prison, Paul knew that God was still in control. No matter what setbacks or problems, we can trust God fully in God. Does that sound familiar? You know, back when all this pandemic started and we started shutting down, uh, everybody was preaching, trusting God. God is still in control. And I had to ask myself, was God really in control? Did I truly believe that? Or was I putting my faith in something else? Trusting God, even though there's going to be death. Trusting God, even though some may lose their job. Trusting God, even though some of the daily routines we have grown accustomed to is taken away or put on pause. You know, we've talked a lot about um, during this time, we have probably slowed down a lot because we didn't have a choice. And I can honestly say from my family's perspective, it has been a great thing to be stuck at home, if that's the word you want to use. It has forced us to uh, grow closer together it has forced us to open our Bibles. It has forced us to communicate. Uh, it has forced us just to kind of get closer because we didn't have anything else to do. We couldn't go to the ball field, couldn't go to the gym. Everything was closed down. So we kind of got back to the basics. And I think that's a lot of times what God wants us to do when we read his word is to go back to the basics, to the simple stuff, because you can learn more from that time than you can any time else. What about Job? Let's turn over to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, and we'll read verses 20 through 22. Job chapter 1. Here's what it says. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be, be praised. And the key verse is verse 22. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. If anybody, if anybody in the Bible had a reason to lose faith, it was Job. But yet he lost everything that he owned, but he didn't lose faith in God. I want to remind us today that with faith, Matthew chapter 17, verse 20 tells us we can move mountains as, with faith as small as a mustard seed. 1 Corinthians 2 and 5 tells us that our faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. With faith in God and His power, what can stand in our way? Many of you are probably wondering why I'm sitting in a grove of poplar trees surrounded by poison oak. And I have a good reason for that. But I wanted to do a little bit of something today. You know, Scott kind of moved around the church building uh, past Sunday morning during class. I think it was very effective. Uh, kind of give you a different sense of what was going on. But I wanted to use this setting as an illustration to you to talk about faith just for a minute. Those of us who kids know that they give us two things. One, they give us the opportunity to grow in our faith uh, due to their actions. And they also give you the opportunity to be able to give devos like this because of their actions. As you can see behind me, there is a, um, a structure, if you want to call it that, 
the official name of this structure as given by my kids is called a treehouse. It has all the traits of a treehouse. Uh, there are three pieces of wood nailed to three different trees. And there's a floor, sorta. It's not a full floor, but it's, it's a semi-floor. What you have to keep in mind is two key aspects of this treehouse behind me. The first being that no money was spent on this structure. We didn't go out to the store to buy any of the material you see. Uh, everything they found, they found either in the barn or in the basement or just laying around our property. The second thing you need to remember is that no one over the age of 14 was involved or consulted in building this said treehouse behind me. This treehouse is all like our faith. And I will tell you that I have not gotten up to faith yet to stand on this treehouse. I'm a little leery. All three of them have been on it and it's held up fine, but that was made for them so they can continue to stand on it all that long. And I have not yet gotten up the courage to get on top of it. But this treehouse is a lot like our faith. It's a little shaky. Uh, it looks rough. It appears just thrown together, held up by threads with little to no support under it. It's also held together by some rusty nails they found. The same type of nail that was used to hang our Lord on the cross. Nails. It's because of those nails that we are able to have faith that we can go to heaven. I want to close out today's devotional with a couple of quotes. And I hope these provide you a little bit of uh, just some positivity during this time that we're under. Faith is like a radar that sees through fog. The reality of things at a distance that the human eye cannot see. Oftentimes God, oftentimes, God demonstrates his faithfulness in adversity by providing us for what we need to survive. He does not change our painful circumstances. He sustains us through them. True faith manifests itself through our actions. Faith is like taking the first step when you, have, when you don't see the whole staircase. Thank you again for joining me today. Uh, I hope this just provides you a little bit of, of hope, a little bit of positivity during this time. And it's like I said earlier, we look forward to seeing you back at the building soon. Uh, but just keep praying for the church. Thank you for what you're doing. Uh, thank you for continuing to spread the word. And if there's anything we can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Y'all have a good afternoon.